I just did an entire review. I forgot to hit record. So, hopefully that was a good rehearsal for me. All right. Yeah, we got to get back to proper work here. So, looking at empathological fallacies. This is a Talin episode. Mostly Talin. It opens up with her reciting a message she's going to send back to her former captain to try and get reinstated. Yeah. And But the frustration she's feeling dealing with these irrational, emotional, crazy people on this human ship. And it's just compatible right now because they're escorting three Beta Z ambassadors from. They are at a conference on Angel One. And they're on their way to Rise Up. And they want to keep the party going all the way in between. So we got. And they're they're going through the court with yard glasses of you know, drink. They're, you know, they're having you know, party, party hard here. And Talin is like, just really. You know. This kind of thing. What did I do in a previous life to deserve this? Yeah. And Captain Freeman is trying to be a gracious host, you know. But there again, they pick up on you. Well, we can sense you. You you'd rather be doing something else than, ba- than babysitting us. Oh no no no! I'm perfectly fine. You know. We got a little tidbit dropped in that uh, in ancient times, Cations. No, they stopped by sick bay. No no, they help me. Hangover cures, prophylactics, whatever. It's right here, and there's you know. And Tiana's, ooh, I didn't know you're bringing a buffet. It turns out ancient times, uh, Cations hunted beta Zeds. But that was old times. Now we we get by with synthetic beta Zoid now. And, you know, ha ha ha. Me and, and, and accidentally burns Bill of trying to go, ah, oh, sorry. That's it. But going along, and they take they, they reconvene in the bar where they're going to party hardy all the way to Risa. But uh, unbeknownst to, you know, kind of you know, not really notice right away is that everyone's partying really hard. They're getting really excited. They're really getting into it. In fact, you know, the big thing was uh, Dr. Jig- Migdipu, Migdipu, uh gets frustrated at the, the uh, replicators not producing the soup. I said regurgitated soup. But the, and he starts whacking it with a bar stool. And he's really going, but yeah, what else is, you know, Eventually pulls out a phaser and shoots the damn thing, and, thing. and everyone else is just going over the top nuts, you know, party and hardy. And there are a couple of guys making out on the on the table and, stuff, and just you know rolling around. And eventually they finally, hey, it's, it's, I, wait, why am I yelling? Why am I feeling? This? And, and Captain Freeman's like, you need to get, you know, they figured something is affecting them. They this is, this is not normal. I mean. Captain Freeman gets up on the on the bar and says, "Everyone, please, you're starving officers. Get all of yourselves. Why do I care so much?" <laughs> and they they rationally, okay. Well, I think we've seen this sort of thing before. We think it's this uh, whatever you know that fever that uh, Waxana was suffering from when she visited DS Nine, broadcasting her th- you know emotionally, and everyone went freaking nuts. So I figured, okay, maybe that's it. So it's like try and get you know, get the beta zoids down to sick bay and scan them, see if they've got a few. But you know, turns out no, they don't actually. But they figure they're on to us. They, you know, blown a cover. So it turns out they're not ambassadors. They're they're part of beta zoid intelligence. And so they suddenly you know they kid you know they basically capture Captain Freeman, take out a window, tie up uh, Tiana Mariner and uh, Talin down to sick bay. And up to the bridge, commandeer the ship, and get the young know, in their state. They're being agitated too, so something else is causing it. And then the leader gets the bright idea: we're just going to do a direct route straight to Betazoid, Betazed, which unfortunately kicks them right across the Romulan neutral zone. It's a holy crap! <laughs> now they're not moving. You know, meanwhile, uh, Boimler is you know being treated to a uh, kind of a training program run by Shax and a security team. But he instead of, you know, learning to really kick ass and, you know, learn martial arts, it's slam poetry and charades, you know, and eventually get into jigsaw puzzles and tarot cards and you know this is not what he thinks security is. What what? I wanted to learn to kick ass. And it's like and he's trying to explain no this is not no, we do more than just, you know, phaser things, okay? But at one point Freeman managed to hit the red alert button. At that point, they snap to. They're grabbing phases out of lockers. They're running. Oh, phaser! Phaser! Boy, I'm like, give me a break! You know, they, you know, 
So they're rushing to the bridge. We take that. And on the way, they come across uh, Tiana, who has gone full feral now. She's going to turn these betazoids into brisket <laughs> and claw at the carpet. But uh, while back in sick bay, Talyn and Mariner, they know, you know, uh, Tiana left the tricorder running. Turns out the source of the interference was not the betazoids after all. It was her, Talyn. She appears to be uh, suffering some version of Ben Dye syndrome. Or something similar to it. It's kicked off the circuits in there. They know that you know, Ben and she's broadcasting her frustration and, and emotions throughout the crew. And that's what's driving them crazy. And they Of course they mention this to the crew in the bar and say, Oh, get her and then, so they gotta lock themselves up in a in a closet somewhere. Well, Mariner gives a really good pep talk. And like, no, you're you're fine. What do you mean you're not Vulcan enough? Spock's dad at, at Ben Dye's system. He's Vulcan as a motherfucker. Because <laughs> you know, she's blaming herself. She's not Vulcan enough to, you know, to, what bull? <laughs> you know, like, what was that captain? So, you know, Skolar. Well, Skolar, Sk- he's an idiot. You save them, and this is how we treat you? Screw him. Because <laughs> <clears throat> I think she followed her instincts. You know, she, was, she was introduced on uh, Wijduk from Latin, uh, from a uh, previous uh, season. Where I see, you know, different ships, lower decks, and she was on the Vulcan version, and she, you know, did something. And she was following her instincts on this thing, but still very cold and kind, you know. But, but the fact that she would, you know, didn't obey the protocol, you know, thing. And no matter the fact that saved the ship, and saved the day for everyone, but you know, he came to the rescue of the, of the Cerritos at that point. She was, you know, deemed to be, you know, too highly emotional, and therefore she was sent off to Starfleet, where she, you know, and that's eventually, you know, get the. Season three finale, where she wound up at the very end on the Cerritos. We've been rooting for that for a while. We knew it. She was. They were setting her. They were playing too much attention to her in this thing, just setting her up. She's going she's to come on. So sure, she, sure enough, she finally did. But once she finally realized, yes, you know, I, I am. You know, I am Vulcan as a motherfucker. And she calmed down. Her state there, you know, and then no longer was broadcasting the rest of the crew, and everyone started to come come to their senses. Just in time for you know. <laughs> Freeman to leap to the front to the to the helm and boom, right <laughs> stop right before they went across the uh, the border to the neutral zone. At which point a warbird decloaks and you see on the bridge. Oh, they were looking forward to that. They watched her coming. Oh, don't worry, we'll go to sector eighty nine. We'll we'll lurk over there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But now everyone's finally figured out. Okay, we're fine. We're there and. No harm, no harm, no foul. We, we're just, you know, and then, by the way, here's the, here's our files on this ship that's been going on blowing up other ships. Like, oh, you got a blurry picture of that thing. It looked like an ag- agonizer. And the, you know, communications blackout is lifted, so oh, you can send a message now. And she's like, no, I think I will stay here on this on the Cerritos and study your chaotic ways. It's like, okay, and gets a hug out of Mariner. Fortune. Uh, Tiana's like, you know, I didn't got no. I only I only allow one hug per day. No, oh, okay, he's not gonna do anything. Please, don't say him. So, Tiana still wants to be everyone's friend. But that's where we're at there. And we're getting actual character development from these guys, and then it's background characters too. It's not just you know our leads. Everyone gets a moment. You know, Billups had an entire episode on his thing. He's, but yeah, these are it is really developing into, into a. It is a good show. It is good Star Trek here. It's couched amongst a lot of references and, and but they're, yeah, they're they're not as many. They're not you don't get a lot of rapid fire stuff. You got a couple of things. This is like really just a few references here and there to set things up, and they're not out of context. They're you know, it's it's setting up the story and they're using it. They you know, these guys love the fact they're doing a Star Trek show. They want to use as many toys in the sandbox as they can, and they know how to use them because they know use them in the proper context. So yeah. If you're not watching this show, really give it a shot, okay? You don't just blow it off as like Rick and Morty on start. No, it, it, yeah, the Rick and Morty pedigree is there, but this is not Rick and Morty, okay? And even though Rick and Morty, I think, is freaking brilliant too. That's surrealist as all hell. But give it a shot. This is this is good Star Trek, and it's pretty decent comedy too. Again, it's like we need to learn to not take things so damn seriously. If we can't have fun with it. Then what's the point? But that's it for that one. We'll move on to uh, 
the Ferengi one later. But you know, for now, we'll talk at you later. <laughs>